live events to me are always going to be a part of what I do because they're just awesome. So like one, I think there's some selfish benefits. Like there are some emotional benefits to the person, like to you running a live event. It can really reignite the passion you have for your business and your community. Like if you're getting a little bored, if everything's online, like doing a, you know, even, even small mastermind retreats, really, there's a lot of emotional benefit to that. When you do a bigger event, and this is maybe a more masculine thing, I guess, but like I am cracked out high for an during and after the event. It, it's the closest thing I've ever felt running a live event to that feeling I got when I coached football and we were running out of the tunnel or that feeling when I played sports and there was a big game like on Friday. Like, do you feel that excitement leading up to the event and like that energy? Absolutely. Yeah, man. Now, being being the the main person, that is such, that's the the best feeling, especially when you see people getting what they want and they're thanking mm. you for them spending their time and money to come and take part in it. But here's the one thing to also to key to, so conferences take a lot of work and take a lot of planning. And what I suggest is two different things. Number one, you have the right people running the event during the event so that all you are going to do is walk around and talk to people, talk to sponsors, make sure everybody's having a good time. You should You're not the be head running coach. the event. You're the head. Exactly. You're there for fourth down. Everybody else is doing everything else. That's the goal. Exactly. Now that's, yeah. that's coupled with, so you make sure everybody else is also doing the work, but here's the thing. Remember when I said it takes a lot of work, there are going to be times in the entire year. If you're doing multiple years, like year after year after year, that it's going to be like, Oh, why am I doing this? I can't, uh, I <laughs> last year was so hard. Why am I doing it again? Well, what you do is you, I literally every year I take about maybe 20 minutes and I just walk through the halls and just cherish this. I need to draw on this in six months from now when it's really hard or like a month before the event. What's really, really hard. Okay, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> That's what I suggest <laughs> you do. Yeah, yeah. I, I even like to the uh, I, I do like the tiredness of planning and the stress of it, because I think when you're a high achiever, you're trying to be an entrepreneur, a speaker, a coach, podcast or whatever you're trying to do like things can get routine really fast and the challenge needs to exceed the skill set. Totally. And no matter yeah. how good you are at a live event, like I've, I've ran a lot of live events. Every single one is going to be different. There's going to be something happen that's never happened before. There's going to be uh, just, just different variables, different people involved. And like, it's good emotionally as an entrepreneur to continually having those things that can challenge the, the skill set. And each, even even if you host like a 20, 30 person mastermind for like a, you know, do a cruise or you go down to a, you, everybody's all inclusive and you just charge them 10K and you pay for all the hotels or whatever. Like that takes that coordination to another level and it crystal, it makes you love the rest of your business because all the other parts of your business have to feed that emotional intense week. And then when you come out of it, you get to fall back into the, like it feels good when you come back and all you've got is a Zoom call. Ah, <laughs> all I've got this week is a Zoom call in my community. This is like vacation. What are you talking about? It is because I remember when I first started doing the Zoom calls, you know, the group coaching for the membership, I was getting all nervous and worried. Now it's just like, oh, hey, what's up, guys? Let's oh, this is cake. <laughs> That's all cake I got to do. I'll just exactly through this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> um, another benefit that I that, that one, I think the thing that draws me back to the stage, especially speaking, because I speak at all my live events, but like, is the impact. Like I can totally transform someone's life in 45 minutes or a day long seminar. Like I know for a fact, and, and I, and I think I know that not because of any like great faith in my own skill set. I'm just a redneck from Kentucky at heart, but like at the same time, I've been to a lot of live events myself. And if you're going to host live events, you need to go to live events. That's you got to, it's like re uh, good authors, read other people's books right? Podcasters listen to other podcasts. Absolutely. Podcasters listen to other people's podcasts. Comedians listen to other people's jokes. And like, I, I know I can point to three moments in my life where if I had not gone to a live event and been a participant, and if that person had not hosted that live event, I would not be the person I am today. And I've, and I, and I see that now on the other side, you know, you can listen to my podcast for a year, but if you come to a weekend with me, you're going to be coming out of that with some big impact. And I know you've probably seen this too from RubeCon, just the impact. It's oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. I, I know I have been affected by going to an event 
in 2017, mutual friend of ours, Tom Sylvester. Um, I met him and Jason Brown on the same exact event. Uh, they were together um, in 2017. And literally that one meeting has changed my trajectory of my oh, online yeah. business and everything that I've done is just, just compounded. I could just trace back all the way to that point. But then one more, I'll give you, I went to a live event back. I think I was maybe 23, 24, something like that. Just got a college and I went to a live event. I only thing I really remember, but it stuck with me. This one guy gave this parable or quote. It basically says, when is the best time to plant a tree? Well, it was 20 years ago. The next best time is literally today. And yeah. I that stuck with me. And I still say that today because if you're going to be investing, if you're going to be building a business, if you're going to be trying to get financial independence, whatever it might be, you don't want to look back 20 years from now and say, I wish I was on a Shane, listening to Shane Sam show and I should have taken action. You I don't should have had a person. live event. Oh, I should have had a mastermind. I should have You want to look back and say, that. I'm so glad I did it back then, had that live event, had that mastermind, had that membership, whatever, or invested in real estate because you took action right there. So yes, my life has definitely been changed because of live events. And I will always go to live events because of all the amazing changes that happened for me. But then all of my attendees at my conferences, my events, my goodness, they cannot stop thanking me. All yeah. like every single time they see me, Dustin, thank you. And because I make it about community, about helping them, not about, you know, like money grabbing and all that sort of stuff. It's literally about them. They cannot stop thanking me and they are lifers. They're going to keep coming back. I had a friend of mine uh, that lives in New York. She sent me a message the other day. Uh, she was at the movies and she took a picture. Someone was wearing a flip your life live shirt. This just happened like 30 days ago. Whoa. And I'm like that person. It was so impacted by that event in 2018. That was it. Was the 2018 shirt? They're still wearing the t-shirt, baby. They're still like, wearing the shirt. I, 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 nobody's doing that from my podcast or from my email list or like anything else.